Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast Discussions on my favorite games, movies, TV shows, anime, comic books, collectibles, and other fun content for gamers and geeks. I'm your host, Jeremy. Welcome to the show. Hello, welcome back, uh, followers of my podcast. This is Jeremy from Video Gamers Oasis, a playful podcast. And we're continuing our research of Shigeru Miyamoto, one of my biggest uh, boyhood heroes. He inspired me to be creative myself, but more importantly even than that, uh, he, uh, well, he, he, he was a source of great joy through all the video games that he designed. Um, his Nintendo games uh, like Super Mario Brothers and Legend of Zelda, so, such games like that, uh, and many other fantasy and science fiction kind of cartoony style artwork in these games really captivated my imagination. And I just wanted to share some of the research I've been doing on um, on this gentleman who's uh, considered to be the Walt Disney of, of the video game genre. And last episode of this uh, podcast, we were researching 1977 to 1984, the arcade beginnings of Donkey Kong. Now we're researching 1985 to 1989, NES, forward slash Famicom, Super Mario Brothers, and The Legend of Zelda. And this research, uh, of course, is based on wikipedia.org, so I encourage you to do your own research, um, to go to wikipedia.org and look at the uh, information yourself and do some personal study on the history of this uh, remarkable gentleman. But I, I wanted to share my love for this, for the guy's works, because I really appreciate what he did. And so let's continue on. Uh, 1985 to 1989, NES forward slash Famicom, Super Mario Brothers, and The Legend of Zelda. And I'm just, uh, I'll be making some commentary uh, on certain research as well. So it's not just going to be reading like a robot. I'm actually going to have some, uh, some feedback and some opinions. As Nintendo re- released, as Nintendo released its first home video game console, the family computer re- re-released in North America as the Nintendo Entertainment System. Miyamoto made two of the most momentum momentous titles for the console, and in the history of video games as a whole, Super Mario Brothers, a sequel to Mario Brothers, and The Legend of Zelda. An entire, an entirely original title. And there's an illustration here, in this, um, in this research here, of uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Miyamoto's Super Mario Brothers was bundled with the NES in America. The game and the system are credited with helping to bring North America out of the slump of the 1983 game industry crash. That would be an interesting. Uh, bit of history i like to look into and in research in a future episode of this podcast so stay tuned for that i'd like to look more into that moving on in both games miyamoto decided to focus more on gameplay than on high scores unlike many games of the time super mario brothers largely took a linear approach with the player traversing the stage by running, jumping, and dodging or defeating enemies. By contrast, Miyamoto employed non-linear gameplay in The Legend of Zelda, forcing the player to think their way through riddles and puzzles. I like really like that part of The Legend of Zelda, how it was a very... Um, uh, very brainy, more brainy uh, of a game than the Super Mario Brothers. And you had to go through a lot of puzzles. I really like that. You had to solve a lot of Indiana Jones style <laughs> traps that would uh, the hero would have to overcome. Moving on. The world was expansive and seemingly endless. 
offering an array of choice and depth never before seen never before, never before in a video game. With The Legend of Zelda, Miyamoto sought to make an in-game world that players would identify with a miniature garden that they can put inside their drawer. He drew his inspiration from his experiences as a boy around Kyoto, where he explored nearby fields, woods, and caves. Each Zelda title embodies this sense of exploration. When I was a child, Miyamoto said, I went hiking and found a lake. It was quite a surprise for me to stumble upon it. When I traveled around the country without a map, trying to find my way, stumbling on amazing things as I went, I realized how it felt to go on an adventure like this. He recreated his memories of becoming lost amid the maze of sliding doors in his family home in Zelda's Labyrinth Dungeons. In February 1986, Nintendo released the game as the launch title for the Nintendo Entertainment System's new disc system peripheral. Miyamoto worked on various different games for the Nintendo Entertainment System, including Ice Climber, Kid Icarus, Excitabike, and Devil World. He also worked on sequels to both Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda. Super Mario Bros. 2, released only in Japan at the time, reuses gameplay elements from Super Mario Bros., though the game is much more difficult than its predecessor. Nintendo of America disliked Super Mario Bros. 2, which they found to be frustratingly difficult and otherwise little more than a modification of Super Mario Bros. Rather than risk the franchise franchise's popularity, they canceled its stateside release and looked for an alternative. They realized they already had one option in Yume Kojo, or Y U M E K O J O, Yume Kojo, colon, Doki Doki Panic. That's D O K I Panic. Dream Factory, Heart Pounding Panic. That's the English translation also designed by Miyamoto. This game was reworked and released as Super Mario Bros. 2, not to be confused with the Japanese game of the same name. In North America and Europe, the Japanese version of Super Mario Bros. 2 was eventually released in North America under the title Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. The successor to The Legend of Zelda, Zelda II, The Adventure of Link, bears little resemblance to the first game in the series. The Adventure of Link features side-scrolling are- areas with a large world map rather than the bird's eye view of the previous title. The game incorporates a strategic combat system and more RPG elements, including an experience including an experience points EXP system, magic spells, and more interaction with non-player characters, also known as NPCs. Link has extra lives. No other game in the series includes this feature. The adventure of Link plays out in a two-mode dynamic. The overworld the area where the majority of the action occurs in other Legend of the Legend of Zelda games is still from a top-down perspective, but it now seen, serves as a hub to the other areas. Whenever Link enters a new area, such as a town, the game switches to side to a side-scrolling view. These separate methods of traveling and entering combat are one of the many aspects adapted from the role-playing genre. 
The game was highly successful at the time and it introduced elements such as Link's magic meter and the Dark Link character that would become commonplace in future Zelda games. Although the role-playing elements such as experience points and the platform style side-scrolling and multiple lives were never used again in the official series. The game is also looked upon as one of the most difficult games in the Zelda series and 8-bit gaming as a whole. Additionally, The Adventure of Link was one of the first games to combine role-playing video game and platforming elements to a considerable degree. Soon after, Super Mario Bros. 3 was developed by Nintendo Entertainment Analysis and Development. The game took more than two years to complete. The game offers numerous modifications on the original Super Mario Bros., ranging from costumes with different abilities to new enemies. Bowser's children were designed to be unique in appearance and personality. Miyamoto based the characters on seven of his programmers as a tribute to their work on the game. The Koopa Ling's names were later altered to mimic names of well-known Western musicians in the English localization. In a first for the Mario series, the player navigates via two game screens, an overworld map, and a level playfield. The overworld map displays an overhead representation of the current world and has several paths leading from the world's entrance to a castle. Moving the on-screen character to a certain title or tile, pardon me, will allow access to that level's playfield. A linear stage populated with obstacles and enemies. The majority of the game takes place in these levels. This is all the time we have for this uh, reading of the research of uh, Shigeru Miyamoto. Uh, tune in next episode. I'll be researching 1990 to 2000. Super NES, Nintendo 64, Super Mario 64, and the Ocarina of Time. Thanks for tuning in, folks. I appreciate you uh, listening to my podcast. I hope you had a fun time learning about uh, Shigeru Miyamoto. Perhaps many of you already know this information, but perhaps you you enjoy even lear- re- relearning about this gentleman's amazing uh, host of works. So we'll t- continue on uh, probably another day. Thank you for tuning in. And if you haven't already, please uh, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Video Gamers Oasis, and click the notification bell. Uh, this video will be uh, included or converted into a video where I'll be sharing this podcast, uh, this audio on a podcast, on uh, a video series of videos on my YouTube channel. And it will also be shared on my website, videogamersoasis.com. You can also follow me on uh, Twitter, video underscore tweets. My Facebook business page is Video Gamers Oasis. I also have an Instagram, Video Gamers Oasis, that I'm working on, and uh, TikTok as well, Video Gamers Oasis. I occasionally put a funny video there. Thanks for tuning in. Take care of each other this holiday season. We'll talk to you again real soon. Take care. Sayonara until next time. Video Gamers Oasis Website YouTube Channel